We have a fantastic contemporary session on our upcoming auction on Monday evening and one of the top lots is this fantastic work by Wim Boerta. It's an installation piece. The sculpture was cast in 2016. The coal compilation um, was done after his solo show at the Norval Foundation where a similar installation was, was exhibited. So we are just very much thrilled to have such an important museum quality piece on the sale. One of the magical aspects of this installation lies in the reflections. So I, I welcome you to please come down to Brickfield and come look at this work in person, wherever you stand, what time of day it is, it's always changing. And it really is, it's fantastically beautiful and um, really something to admire. I'd like to highlight this jewel of a work by J.H. Pianif. It's the Egyptian felucca sailing boats. It was painted um, after time spent in London in 1925, uh, traveling back down to South Africa along the, the East Coast. Um, the boats were coal-fired and often stopped at Port Said for bunkering, and the passengers were allowed uh, a few days to travel inland. The Egyptian felucca sailing boats date back to biblical times, um, but are continued to be used on the Nile for, for fishing and transportation. Pianif paints the hieroglyphic symbols uh, on the sails, Ra, the sun god, and the eye of Horus. Pianif's painterly application of bright pastel palette of pinks and purples perfectly captures the opalescence of the scene. A really exciting and special uh, example of Julius Mfete is on this sail, lot 249. This is an Isikosa homestead scene, and it's one of the largest of his work that I've ever seen. A really beautiful example of a traditional homestead. The clothing that the figures wear are not traditional clothing that you would wear in everyday life, but more for special occasions, and shows specifically the type of traditional significance of each role player in the homestead. So you have the mother with her istufi to symbolize that she is the mother of the household and, and child, and the father sitting to her right, which was always a symbol of his role as protector of the home. And you can see from the armbands here that they match uh, the mothers, and that is the daughter preparing the meal. Julius Mfete is an interesting artist to me because he wasn't traditionally or conventionally when he was making art in the 80s and 90s seen in the fine art scene. He was often delegated because he was a black artist to craft or tourist outlets or spaces that didn't acknowledge him as an artist and he's actually an extraordinary realist uh, carver and should be seen in that way so it's very exciting to see him on a fine art auctioneer sale and a really beautiful example of what South Africa has to offer in terms of talent and extraordinary ability. An artist focus on the October virtual live marquee sale this year is Esther Mashangu. Dr. Esther Mashangu was a South African artist that's had a long career in the contemporary art scene. And the five works, Lot 202 to Lot 206, are examples of the type of work that she can make and give a prime example of her as an artist. You can see here, this one I'm particularly excited about. This is Souvenir de Paris, and it was made in 2003. And it looks back to the artist's memory of an experience where she visited Paris for the first time in 1989. Uh, she was invited to be part of a seminal exhibition, Magicians de la Terre, at the Pompidou, which was an exhibition that was hailed for being innovative in that it compared Western modes of practicing and contemporary artists with non-Western mode artists. And she was invited to build a replica of her house in South Africa in situ, which you can actually see in the top of the painting here. And what is really interesting to note is how she depicts the airplane. 
in a way that's very similar to her contemporary at the time, Tito Zungu, who used to adorn envelopes with ballpoint pen um, and other locomotives and vehicles, and it has a very similar feel to it as that. So it could possibly have been a acknowledgement of his work. Also, her depictions of monuments of Paris, but done in a stylized way that's very much her style and shows how it influenced her at the time and what she notes as her fondest experience of that exhibition. The exhibition Magicians de la Terre was a very important exhibition for her career. Although the exhibition itself was criticized for polarizing Western and non-Western artists in some aspects, it still was a exhibition that is seen as pushing her career into the contemporary realm and how we see the artist as a contemporary artist. Another really exciting piece on the sale is this Imparo, which is actually not uh, done on canvas. It is a beadwork piece, a blanket, and it is traditionally created to be worn by women that have just been married and are to symbolize their status in Indobele culture. And what I find really great about it is it shows not only that Mutlangu was open to exploring aspects of her heritage as a contemporary artist, but also that the complexity of making and beadwork should be seen more as an artwork and art making in its own right. And it is a contemporary art form that's very unique to South Africa and should be explored uh, more prominently in the fine art field. So it's great to have an example of this in the sale. On the far right is a work that was done in 2014 and it is one of the largest works by Esther to come to auction. A large scale painting uh, replicating her war mural style but on canvas. It's really beautiful. And then finally these two works over here are works that use more traditional materials as opposed to just paint. And particularly interesting is this one, which is materials that would have been used to make the floor of a traditional house in Indabele culture, which mixes materials with dung, which I think give it a really unique texture. And you can actually see that in some of her other works like this one and Souvenir de Paris. A very important contemporary artist for South Africa and very important addition to anybody trying to create an important South African collection. We've got five lovely PNFs coming up on our October live sale and it's, it's a demonstration of PNF's mastery of all media. So we have works, uh, Cassine works on paper, we've got oil paintings, we've got drawings, a wide array of media, um, again just demonstrating his mastery of these media. Uh, starting with the Cassine work to my right, we have a mountain landscape, a beautiful work uh, which would have been painted very rapidly in this medium which dried so fast. Uh, it creates a lovely iridescent finish and a, an otherworldly color palette. Uh, behind me, a lovely study of the uh, Lechochoto um, mountains in Mpumalanga. And this, this work painted in 1944 is a classic work from the 1940s, balancing massive monumentality, a full tonal range and the elements. Alongside it, um, a beautiful study of Dilan in Stellenbosch. A very simple construction but very powerful and strong too and it's, uh, it's a me the medium is, is one that we don't see that much by him. It's charcoal heightened with white chalk and the interesting thing about a painting or not a painting so much a drawing like this is that when you have a closer look at it you'll see that it does bear a signature but it's a stamped facsimile stamp from when the executor in the artist's studio on the time of the artist's death um, stamp the works that hadn't been signed by the artist, so that would explain the facsimile stamp. And then there are two other works I'd like to share with you too while we're here. The last two paintings on the, uh, on the show are these two works, both from the 1940s. The top work, Mountain Landscape with Cumulus Clouds, uh, a sublime work from 1942, and it, it, re it records this uh, beautiful topography. The artist captures the beautiful uh, serrated peaks with uh, the most 
lovely um, highlights on the ridges and he also shows the foreground so beautifully as to, to give prominence to this landform in the centre and the ascending cumulo nimbus behind. So it's just a masterful um, display of his skill set right here. And then of course below it we've got farmhouse um, at Windberg, another work too where you have this lovely sort of sense of um, atmospheric grandeur and the, the cloud forms, very, very emotional, very powerful. Um, a large percentage of this picture is, is, is taken up with this cloud formation, which I find very emotional and very powerful and uh, something that gives so much life to both of these paintings. Lot 365 by Irma Stern is a large gouache executed in the 1940s. Works from this period, particularly from her travels in Africa and on the Swahili coast in Zanzibar, are particularly desirable to collectors because they come from what is known as Stern's golden period. What's interesting in the present example is um, the blue underpainting which uh, harks back to Stern's German Expressionist roots and her influence of uh, Expressionists while she lived in Germany, specifically with Max Pechstein.